Billionaire George Soros' fund manages about $30 billion for Soros and his family, but the progressive-leaning Soros took nearly a billion dollars in losses recently thanks to the stock market rally spurred by Donald Trump's surprise presidential election. Soros returned to trading at his fund last year, lured back by the opportunities to profit from what he saw as coming economic troubles. The Wall Street Journal's Gregory Zuckerman and Juliet Chung report that Soros was cautious about the market going into November and became more bearish immediately after Trump's election. The stance proved to be a mistake, as the stock market has rallied on expectation that Trump's policies will boost corporate earnings and the overall economy. Over the past three months, the S&P 500 index has increased by more than 6%. As a result, some of Soros' trading positions incurred losses approaching $1 billion, people familiar with the fund say, adding that he adjusted his positions and exited many of his bearish bets late last year, avoiding further losses. That said, Soros' broader portfolio performed better, bringing in profits before and after the election from long-held investments in sectors including financials and industrials, they say. Those gains helped Soros fund management gain about 5% on the year. But of the United States, where does he stand in an open society? Well, I have described him as a, an imposter and con man and, and a would-be dictator. Uh, but he's only a would-be dictator because I'm uh, confident that the Constitution and the institutions of, uh, of, America, of the United States are strong enough. On Friday, President Trump falsely claimed protesters were not motivated by their concerns but by paychecks from billionaire George Soros instead, quote, Well, that's a very old, tired, anti-Semitic. <laughs> very rude elevator screamers are paid professionals only looking to make senators look bad. Don't fall for it. Also, look at all of the professionally made identical signs paid for by Soros and others. These are not signs made in the basement from love with the hashtag troublemakers. Trump's comments, which was examined and debunked by The Washington Post, came shortly after this exchange on Fox Business with Judiciary Chair Chuck Grassley. Do you believe George Soros is behind all of this, paying these people to get you and your colleagues in elevators or wherever they can get in your face? I tend to believe it. I believe it fits in his uh, attack mode that he has. Uh, Yami Shalsandor, um, are these protesters paid, or what do you make of this? Uh, no, I don't think the protesters are paid by George Soros. But even further, what I want to say is that the Republican Party and a lot of the Republican leadership are really acting like Donald Trump. I've been really taken aback by yeah. by covering President Trump and and all this conversation that people had about pre about him coming in and made chairman of the Judiciary Committee to uh, pick up uh, an anti-Semitic slur and run with it. Well, Joe, one thing I'll say about the paid protesters line is that the, anybody who said that obviously didn't actually go out to the halls or the grounds of the Capitol and, and see and talk to any of these talk women. So what they're saying uh, by, with this charge is that, yeah, George Soros paid some people to go out and publicly tell their rape stories, right, or, or to tell their sexual assault stories. I mean, the, the stories that you'd hear just walking around the halls were so gripping, so, so terrifying, so whipping up a uh, frenzy about George Soros. You have the President of the United States tweeting about it. You have the Senate Judiciary uh, Leader uh, uh, talking about George Soros and this anti-Semitic conspiracy. Uh, it, it reminds me of mm. exactly what uh, we, we have a guest coming on at 8.30, a, a very well-respected man who, who when talking about why he decided to leave the Republican Party this weekend, said they can try. Absolutely. And this goes back, I think we're looking at you know, basically a 60-year drama here. And I, and I don't think we can look at it in isolation. And a lot of this conversation, a lot of these tropes, as you identify them, come from the early 1950s. They come from the people who joined the John Birch Society, who thought that Dwight Eisenhower was, quote, a dedicated agent of the communist conspiracy. This is a long-term uh, conversation about, and, and momentum building, about we're never going to be fooled again. It's a 
it's a scarlet hair of thing. They're never going to be hungry again. The right is never going to be fooled again. And that's what I think Senator Graham, Senator McConnell, they're playing off this, this deep uh, storm system that's been building for 60 to 70 years. Well, coming up, the U.S. Department of Justice will soon... We're not supposed to use that word. You know what I am? I'm a nationalist, okay? I'm a nationalist. Well, Trump has continued to stoke conspiracies about billionaire liberal donor George Soros, who was Jewish and the target of one of the mail bombs sent out last week. Here he goes. It's become radical resistance. You ever see their signs? Resist. They say, what are you going to resist? I don't know. They'll go to a person holding a sign who gets paid by Soros or somebody. Right. That's what happens. By Soros or somebody. And last year, after the deadly rally led by white nationalists down in Charlottesville, Virginia, this is what the president said minorities but this thing about globalist i didn't know that was a code i i didn't i didn't know that soros was particularly targeted because of his faith his religion his, his jewishness uh, tell me about those code words well chris to to jewish ears and jewish eyes uh the kinds of words that uh lend credence to the theory that there's an insidious force in the world somehow not quite human uh, somehow not responding to your tribe, to your family, uh, that somehow has no local rules or allegiance. Uh, that's been the trope that's in the accusation that's been used against the Jews.